So it's time to put it all together and have a statement about conservation of energy. Um, we figured out that the work done by a conservative force, and for us right now, that means gravity or a spring force. The work done by a conservative force is the negative of the change in potential energy. And so for gravity, the potential energy function was mg times the y coordinate. And for a spring, the potential energy function was 1 half kx squared, where x is the displacement from the natural length of the spring. One additional thing I want to point out is that the work done by these conservative forces is totally independent of the path that the object takes. And that's what makes it actually useful to define these potential energy functions in the first place. So all I need is an initial and final y coordinate, and I've got the work done by gravity. And it doesn't matter how complex the path is. And the same is true for a spring. Just give me an initial and final compression or stretch, and I can tell you the difference in potential energy and therefore how much work the spring has done. So this goes really quick now. Um, if I go back to the work energy theorem, the net work on an object causes a change in the kinetic energy. Let's look at the case where there's no friction. In other words, I only have conservative forces acting. Then I'll start with network. Gives me a change in kinetic energy. And I'll say if there's only conservative forces acting, then the network is just the work done by the conservative forces. And then I could write down the work done by conservative force is the negative of the change in the potential energy function. I could add that term to both sides and maybe flip it around. And I get delta U plus delta K is equal to zero. And this has the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy is zero. In other words, there's no change in the total energy. So a little bit more modification here. That's u final minus u initial. This is k final minus k initial. And then I can say u initial, oops, plus k initial, just moving those terms to one side of the equation, has to be equal to u final plus k final. So if I take the potential energy and the kinetic energy together and add them, I'm going to have the exact same number in the initial state as I do in the final state. And what I could do is define a new term E and call it the total mechanical energy. And it's just the potential plus the kinetic. And so what we're looking at is an equation that says the total mechanical energy of the system is constant provided there's no friction. And this is a conservation law. So rather than analyzing every single little detail of the motion with forces and accelerations, I've identified a physical quantity that just stays constant throughout the process. And that is the tool I'm able to use to answer the questions I'm trying to answer. Um, I want to look at a quick modification of this for the case where you do have friction. So how do you use conservation of energy if you have a non-conservative force acting? Let's we'll start from the beginning. The network is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And now I'm going to have work done by conservative forces plus work done by non-conservative forces, which that would be friction. And the work done by conservative forces is negative of the change in potential energy. And keep in mind the work done by the non-conservative force here, if it's friction, would be negative. I can also look at problems where um, I have a non-conservative force pumping energy into the system, and it doesn't change anything about what I'm writing down. Oops. Okay, and then I go through the same process. I break the deltas into final minus initials. And then I move everything, all the initials, to one side of the equation. So this is going to be k final minus k initial. This is u final minus u initial. And I'm going to move the initials to the left-hand side. And I have work non-conservative plus u initial plus k initial equals u final plus k final. 
And so it's just a little generalization of conservation of energy where the work by non-conservative forces plus the initial mechanical energy is equal to the final mechanical energy. So you can think to yourself, um, what this is saying in the context of friction is that I would start with some initial amount of energy and then this tells you how much energy is deleted by friction and that of course is equal to the final total energy. All right, so now we're going to get into problem solving with this new conservation law. And I do want to point out before I wrap up this video that while energy methods are very powerful um, because they allow you to skip all the details of the path of an object because these are path independent forces. Um, the weakness of this method is that we're always just comparing an initial state to a final state and we don't get all the details that are in between. So there is a trade-off there.